Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to get going on getting our first Angular animation. Now, what we're going to do first before we do that is we're going to update some of our code to version 1.4.0. Now, Angular changes all the time, and sometimes the changes are breaking, sometimes they're non-breaking, and usually it won't have a gigantic impact on your site unless you're, say, going from a really old version to a really new version, or you're jumping from one point something to two point something, uh, which you may have heard by now, two point something is very different. So since we're just going from 1315 to 14, we shouldn't have to worry about too much. So let's head over to our code. And since we're uh, grabbing all of our scripts from the CDN already, the ajax.google APIs, all we have to do is simply change the version number to 1.4.0. And then again, we wanna change the same version number on Angular ng -ng Animate, uh, so 1.4.0. Now, if we come back to our page and we refresh, we're gonna see we're not getting any console errors, so everything must be fine. So now that we have ng animate and Angular up to uh, version 1.4, what we're gonna do is now we're gonna change how we were showing and hiding this list here. We were showing this with a class of hidden and we were toggling it, and that was really just to show off the abilities of ng class. What we're gonna wanna do now, what we're gonna wanna use is ng if. Now we can keep this uh, dir list.toggle. However, we're going to get rid of the exclamation point in front of it and we're going to change this to ng if, not ng of, ng if. Now we're going to be saying if this toggle is true, then show this list. Now when we save this, come back to our page, refresh, you'll notice it's here. We click hide names, it's gone. Okay, the reason why we're doing this is because really if we were doing this with a a uh, hidden class, you could have just thrown a transition with your CSS and animated it that way without using uh, ng animate. So that would have made this whole video sort of worthless. So what we're going to be doing here is we have ng if, and let's actually open our inspect element here. So let's head over to the ng animate documentation. Now what we see here is that we have this ng enter class is ng enter and ng enter active class that are going to be flashed onto our uh, our property our object uh, to let us know the states that we're going to be animating. So ng enter is going to be first applied to this uh, in in this case the item with the ul because that's where we're going to be writing our CSS. But uh, this is going to be the initial state. So when it's hidden, it's going to be uh, zero. So like you see here, opacity is set to zero and they have a transition of 0 0.5 seconds. So I'm actually going to click this and I'm going to copy this whole little chunk of code here. I'm going to throw it into our CSS up top here. Remember, uh, you'll want your CSS in an actual CSS file and not on your page. Okay, so we have here and they just had a class of fade, but since this is the only unordered list on the page, I'm just going to say and when the unordered list has a class of ng enter, then make sure that it has this transition and give it an opacity of zero. Now again, let's go ahead and copy this line. And what we're going to do is we're going to add on the ng enter active class. So if we head back to the documentation, you can just see it's ng hyphen enter hyphen active. Okay, so we can do ng hyphen enter hyphen active. Now for this one, we don't need the transition because it's already going to be applied through the ng enter class, but we do want to say that at this point, we want this to have an opacity of one. Now, if you'll notice, we're also going to say if it has the class of ng enter and ng enter active, then give it an opacity of one. This way that this property is going to become more specific than this one and override it. Okay, now that we have this ng enter, ng enter active, uh, those are our two states for this particular animation. So you notice that by default, when we hide this, nothing different happens. Absolutely nothing is different. But now when we click show names, we get it to fade in. And since it's happening over the course of 0 0.5 seconds, you'll be able to see something happen in the classes over here. But since I want to make it more obvious, let's make this transition happen over two seconds. That way you can really see the classes come and go if you look at this unordered list here. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of it gone. Now when we add it, look over here for the unordered list. You can see 
NG Animate, NG Interactive, and then after the animation is completely complete, those classes are gone. So that's why we don't have to have anything with the opacity at this point. What's great about Angular is we have this NG Enter class that's being added the moment that this animation is being triggered, and then that active class is being added so that the transition actually happens. Once the animation is complete, uh, all the classes are removed. So let's take this back to zero point, well, we'll have it 0 0.3 seconds because that's typically the time I like fading transitions. And I'm gonna actually have this as an ease. Okay, so now we have these two but you'll notice that when we hide it, they still, they're still they still just jumping away. So just like we have ng enter and ng interactive, we also have ng leave and ng leave active. So let's actually copy these here. Uh, there's going to be some similarities. We're gonna keep the transition the same. So we're gonna change this first ng enter to ng leave. But however, the leaving state is going to start with a one for the opacity, and it's gonna end with a zero. Let's change this to ng leave active and ng uh, leave active. Okay. So we have zero, one, one, zero. So now that this class is going to be applied the moment that we hit the button, and then it's going to apply the active one to trigger the animation over the course of 0 0.3 seconds, fade out, and then the ng if is going to apply and remove that item from the DOM entirely. So let's come here and refresh our page and let's see this in action now. We can fade out, we can fade in. Okay, and you'll notice this is just a fade effect. Let's say we want to say transform, translate, x, zero. Okay, and now at the starting state, we want it to be negative 100%. Now again, we want this to be uh, zero at the uh, leave state and negative 100% at the the just the at just the normal leave state. So as you can see, it's like the opposites here. This is where it's going. This is where it is. This is this is where it is. This is where it's going. Okay. So let's come here and let's see this in action now. What we're going to get on top of a fade is we're also going to get a zoom out. It's going to fly out to the left. Let just like that, okay? And likewise, if we were to modify this and say 100% instead of negative 100%, this is gonna be coming and going in different directions. It's gone, it's entered. It's gone, it's entered. Cool, so as you can see, just through these four classes, we have a lot of control over what's happening to this animation. They don't have to be the same. You can have different exit states and enter states as, you, uh, as you've seen here. Now there's a lot more you can do with ng animate. You can ng animate things when they're added to the list. You can stagger animations for when a page is loaded or something like that. And we're gonna get more into those animation features in the next couple of videos. So check it out, play around with ng enter, ng enter active, and get your animations going with your CSS right now. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment on the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.